Good morning and welcome to Korea Today, live from Seoul. Still no response from Pyongyang on Seoul's offer to hold working-level talks aimed at organizing reunions for families separated by the Korean War in time for the Lunar New Year holiday. The nation's household debt has reached an all-time high last year. Experts worry this would put a damper on domestic demand. Details coming up in headlines. And do political tensions in East Asia have an impact on business? Our Business Daily took a poll. We have that coming up on In Print. And I'll be introducing some great indoor activity centers for kids in Seoul later on in the show. And what do you do with construction debris, obsolete phone booths, and the tons of trash spewing out of Seoul on a daily basis? See how Korea reuses and recycles and converts trash into energy. Say goodbye to the warmer winters. A freeze is on its way. If you can't take the cold, then stay indoors. We'll show you some indoor spots that offers kids warmth and learning opportunities on Wednesday, January 8, 2014. From Arirang News, this is Korea Today. And good morning and thank you for joining us on Korea Today. We're going to begin today's program with some interesting survey results. That's right. So what is the main driving force for married people in Korea? Well, there was a survey that was taken by the Planned Population Federation of Korea. They released the results and this survey was conducted on 926 married citizens. And uh, almost 50% of them said it was their kids that gave him the driving force to get through and just plow through the year 2013. That's right, but if you break down the figure, interestingly enough, those in their 20s said that it's the spouses that are the driving force mm -hmm. of their lives. But if you, the 30-year-olds and the 40, 30 somethings and 40 somethings said that it's their children who are the driving force, while, while the 50-year-olds uh, and 60-year-olds, uh -huh. those in their 60s and uh, 50s, said that it's the patients, forget about the kids, forget about the spouses, it's themselves, That's it's right. the patients that they have. So each age bracket had their own, but this is another interesting question that was asked. Uh, it was about the lottery, so who would you tell if you won the lotto? Who would you tell? No one. <laughs> I'll well, give it to myself. You're not alone because nearly 70 people of people, 70% uh, of the people that took the survey that were in their 20s, they said they would tell their only their significant others. But people in their 50s and 60s had a different answer. 25% of people in their 50s, they said they would tell no one <laughs> and uh, actually think about making an exit strategy alone and by themselves. And 35% of people in their 60s said the same thing. So disappear <laughs> off the face of this earth. <laughs> I don't know what to laugh. Or to be sad about it's these kind of figures. Sad, but right? I guess we have to become 50 and 60 to find out. That's right. <laughs> All right, we'll leave that story there and go to our headlines with Nayan Gyeong. Seoul's offer to hold working level talks for inter Korean family reunions is still awaiting a response from Pyongyang. North Korea watchers say Pyongyang is likely taking its time to mull over tying the stalled Mount Kumgangsan tourism project with the family reunions issue so the regime can discuss resuming operations at the mountain resort. South Korea's Unification Ministry, however, says the two issues will be dealt with strictly separately should North Korea attempt to link them. Meanwhile, Foreign Minister Yoon Byung-se and his U.S. counterpart John Kerry say Seoul and Washington are firmly united against any threats from North Korea, including its nuclear and missile programs. Minister Yoon is currently in Washington to discuss regional security issues in Northeast Asia. A day after her first official press briefing since inauguration, President Park Geun-hye once again asked cabinet members to make sure a three-year economic innovation plan is thoroughly established and realized. The president also called for public organizations to reform themselves so that they can regain trust from the public. 각 부처에서 후속 조치들이 신속하게 이루어져야 할 것이고 국민들이 체감할 수 있도록 국무위원들께서는 사명감을 가지고 임해 주셔야 할 것입니다. Finance Minister Hyono Suk says a basic outline of the government's plan will be drawn up by the end of next month. The plan will include measures aimed at building sound economic fundamentals, carrying out aggressive reforms, and boosting demand in the domestic market. 
But as of now, Korean households are plunging further into debt. The Bank of Korea says the country's household debt reached an all-time high last year, surpassing the one quadrillion won or $935 trillion mark. Lending from banks and other depository institutions, which makes up a large portion of the total household debt, mounted to a record high $640 billion at the end of November. Experts say the nation's independent business owners in particular are not in good shape. The level of absolute household debt owed by individual business owner is extremely high. The rate of increase is also high, so there is a great possibility that this will lead to a drop in their profits and higher ratio in those who shut down their operations due to household debt. The government by the end of January plans to come up with several debt management measures such as expanding long-term mortgage loans so that the mounting debt does not lead to a slump in domestic demand and further slow down the real estate market. And the world's largest mobile phone maker, Samsung Electronics, tentative operating profit for the fourth quarter last year stands at 8.3 trillion won, or roughly 7.8 billion U.S. dollars. That's down 18 percent from the previous quarter and the company's lowest quarterly profit in more than a year. Some analysts say the era of explosive profits fueled by Samsung's cutting-edge smartphones is over, as the profit rate fell sharply in the smartphone sector in the October to December period. But others say because the fall was in part due to special bonus payments given out to employees by Chairman Egon Hee, Samsung will get back on track this quarter with strong semiconductor sales. And good morning, everyone. Time for a look through your newspaper headlines. Unlike yesterday, the papers have their own unique selection of top stories today. Let's go ahead and launch today's imprint with a look at the front page of Kyongyang Shimun, which treats highly the apparently doomed history textbook that had been the subject of much criticism. The headline reads, Only one to two? Out of 2,318 schools adopt rejected Kyohaksa textbook. You'll remember that Kyongyang Shimun had before on its past front pages took issue with the history textbook published by Kyohaksa, uh, critics accusing it of giving a biased account of Korean history that glossed over Japanese colonialism and the country's authoritarian governments. Now, the sub headline notes that even the last few schools that had signed up to adopt the textbooks are quickly dwindling. Uh, Sangsan High School in Jeonju, Jeollabukdo province pulled out, citing a firestorm of criticism from students, parents, and alumni. Hanmin High School in Paju, a boarding school for children of military servicemen and women, is reconsidering the controversial textbook, leaving only Cheongsong Girls School in Gyeongsangbukdo as the last one standing. Meanwhile, the front page image shows the aging but iconic Halmonis, or old ladies' former sex slaves during the Japanese colonial rule protesting the history textbooks and the government that had okayed it. All right, we'll put a, a period on that one and move on to Joseon Ilbo and take a look at its front page image. It shows a newly recovered Joseon era Buddhist painting that the caption says was forcibly removed from the country by the Japanese and has since been floating around the world for the past 100 years. It was purchased on auction in the U.S. in 1944 and efforts by the Korean Cultural, Cultural Heritage Foundation brought it home finally last month. The the piece measures more than three meters high and wide and is said to hold great scholarly value. Meanwhile, the paper's main headline continues the paper's series titled One Korea, New Asia, and the headline reads 122 trillion won, or roughly 114 billion U.S. dollar investment in North Korea infrastructure would yield distribution Silk Road. The article says the investment would be needed over a 10-year period before and after the two Koreas hypothetically reunite. That's 12 trillion won per year. 
or about 1% of South Korea's GDP. And citing the joint study with the Korea Institute for Human Settlements, Cho Sun says the so-called distribution Silk Road would connect the Korean peninsula to Beijing, Moscow and Europe via road and railway and estimates that it would produce an economic benefit of 300 trillion won, that's roughly 280 billion U.S. dollars to the two Koreas over a 10-year period. So there is uh, certainly a visual distinction there. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the front page of Tonga Ilbo. Its headline reads, Neglect of Sciences Grows, Dreams of Nobel Prize Recedes. Now, the story criticizes the cold shoulder natural sciences and engineering, it says, is getting from the government. And the sub-headline says that despite President Park has pledged to boost morale, prize money for scientific awards were actually cut. And in fact, the front page image also contrasts the reception scientists get in China. President Xi Jinping there himself congratulating scientists after the launch of the country's moon rover Chang'e 3 against a high profile award ceremony in Korea, where the honors were presented by a department head, Deputy Minister for Science and Technology Coordination, Park Hang-sik. All right, we'll go ahead and wrap things up with a look at Mail Business newspaper. Its headline this morning reads, 7 out of 10 Korean Japanese uh, CEOs say friction in Northeast Asia deals blow to management. Now, this is based on a poll conducted jointly by The Daily with Japan's Nikkei and China's Hwangu Times on 356 CEOs in the three East Asian nations last month. This before Japanese Prime Minister Shun so Abe's controversial Yasukuni Shrine visit. Now, jumping right to the graph, it shows that nearly 53% uh, said regional political tensions have yet uh, have had no clear impact yet, but certainly could in the future, while almost 12% said that there is some impact and 2.4% said there is a big impact. Now, less than a third said they expect no impact at all on their business management. Now, among the three East Asian nations, the group quipped Korea as likely to see the least growth this year, followed by China and Japan forecasted to see the strongest growth among the three. None of the Korean CEOs surveyed said they believe the business sector was receiving adequate support from their government, while 59 percent of Chinese CEOs said their sector did. 14 percent of Japanese business heads also concurred. And with that, we'll wrap your look at what's in print on this Wednesday. Next up, your closing numbers from Tuesday's Market Action. We're expecting the cold spell to hit the Korean Peninsula sometime tonight, but hopefully not half as bad as how things are looking over in the U.S. That's right. A deadly blast of Arctic air hit the eastern or hit actually most of the United States, shattering decades old uh, temperature records in e eastern U.S. And uh, also it uh, canceled thousands of flights mm -hmm. and led to the overwhelming uh, population increase in homeless shelters as well. Now, we won't see overwhelming temperatures like that here in Korea, but we will see some colder temperatures. That's right. For a closer look at the weather picture, we're joined by Idami from Outdoors. Good morning, Dami. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Today I'm reporting live from Seoul Station. Now this Wednesday morning, we're starting out with cloudy skies and mild weather conditions. Right now, temperatures are at 3.1 degrees Celsius. Now throughout the day, we will be receiving nationwide snow or rain 
Here in Seoul, we won't receive uh, that much, just a very small amount of less than one centimeter. And uh, conditions will clear out by tonight. However, once they do, it looks like sharp gale winds will be coming our way and our lows will plummet down to about negative nine degrees Celsius here in Seoul. With that said, let's go ahead and take a look at the weather around Korea. Here in Seoul, Daegu and Gwangju's highs will reach up to 4, Gangneung and Busan at 6, Jeju Island the warmest at 10 degrees. That's all I have for the weather. I'll be back to give you some helpful information for your travels on this year's Lunar New Year's. Reduce, reuse and recycle, these are the three commandments of environmental conservation and today we're going to take a look at what Korea is doing to keep those commandments. And Karen Choi joins us with this story. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, you know, I, I think as we are making more money, we have a lot of stuff piling up at home, but we don't necessarily use all that stuff and it becomes waste. And as this waste piles up, it's definitely hurting our environment. So I would like to ask you guys, do you do a lot of recycling at home? We have to. It's legal, <laughs> yes. it's legal not to. Mm -hmm. here Separating the trash uh -huh. right. as well as buying those trash bags to uh, throw things away. Yeah. That's right. So at, um, well, Korea is definitely one of the countries, it actually has the highest rate of recycling in the world, well, among OECD countries at least. Um, but still, in Seoul, about 10,000 tons of waste is produced every day. And if we recycle about 60% of that, it's still 4,000 tons of waste. So that's a lot. So what can we do with all this waste? Let's take a look. Tilafushi Island in the Maldives was originally a beautiful coral island, but it now lacks life due to piles of waste. In Dandora, Kenya, the stench of toxic gas fumes fill the air, but still children rummage through mountains of garbage in search of food. Waste disposal is a serious environmental problem. In search of a solution, we're here at a highway rest stop. We found a unique creation made out of waste materials, and it's none other than the public restroom. This is the first restroom in the world to be constructed using only waste from construction materials. Recycled construction aggregates, made from uncontaminated concrete collected at demolition sites, were used to build this restroom. It was put together 100% with recycled construction material like cement, asphalt and asphalt concrete waste from demolished roads. Next to the restroom is a small exhibit where people can see how the recycled construction aggregate used here is made. This is in the hopes of educating more people. It may start from demolition and construction waste. But through crushing and processing, inexpensive, quality construction material is produced. The Tuedolim restroom, which means the restored restroom, proves that waste can be transformed into high-quality resources. Normally, when I think of waste construction material, I imagine it to be dirty stuff that you can't use anymore. But using it like this is eco-friendly, so I think it's great. Rusty automobile rims become a musical instrument, old tires become art pieces, and old banners turn into bags. Going beyond the concept of recycling, the process of converting waste into new material called upcycling is becoming more popular. This is a bus stop in Songpagu, Seoul, where you can see how waste can be transformed beyond your imagination. In a corner of the bus stop, there's an unmanned roadside library, and it's made using an old public telephone booth. The old booths received a fresh coat of red paint, and instead of a telephone, books fill its place. Once considered an eyesore, it has become a library that provides a sweet escape for people waiting for the bus. I didn't know these used to be telephone booths. I get bored waiting for the bus, so it's nice to have a book to read while I wait. Sometimes as aquariums or military guard posts, Phone booths will continue to be used for various purposes. Last year, a small company in Korea made a huge mark in the recycling industry. 
it became the world's first business to successfully convert waste into energy. It's difficult to believe, but here they have managed to successfully transform waste into diesel. This research center is expected to spearhead the movement of turning waste into resources. We mainly use household and industrial waste to produce diesel fuel. The method is simple. They combine a special catalyst with various waste products and use microwaves to convert it into liquid with a certain number of carbon molecules just like crude oil. The newly produced crude oil is then converted into gasoline and diesel. The base material might be different, but they say there is no difference in quality. This all started from the simple question, can garbage become a renewable resource? Now, thanks to these surprising results, the company is receiving a lot of foreign and domestic attention. The company plans to commercialize its operation this year and is working with the government in research and collaboration. Also, it has successfully claimed patents domestically and from countries like the US, China and Germany. 100% of any flammable organic waste materials can be converted into crude oil. Since our technology can replace the need for landfills and incineration plants, we believe we can significantly help solve environmental problems. Scrap material, which was once thrown out, dumped and incinerated, is taking on new forms. Now it can become renewable resources or something completely different, and this transformation is expected to continue. Now that is a, a good use of trash, trash into fuel. Now um, if we don't recycle, Karen, mm -hmm. uh, what happens is that basically trash is left to decompose. Just how long does it take for man-made waste to decompose? Well, you guys have kids, right? Yes. Mm. Did you use cloth diapers or did you use disposable diapers? We used cloth for a month. Really? And then mm. went with disposable the rest of the way. Okay, well, <laughs> that month, yeah, I used That's disposable more diapers. Right. Well, that month, I think you did a lot for the environment. But did you know that disposable diapers, it takes 100 years for it wow. to naturally decompose? A hundred years. I feel years. terrible. I feel terrible. <laughs> I'm guilty right. of... I, my son still uses diapers, so I... I I'm feeling very guilty. <laughs> uh, but also, you know, things like paper, it takes two months to decompose. Plastics, aluminum, 500 years. And glass, it takes about a thousand years to mm -hmm. decompose. So it takes a very long time. So we definitely need to recycle, mm -hmm. upcycle. Mm -hmm. I mean, the concept of upcycle has been more prevalent in industries like design and architecture, but it looks like it has taken another step now. It's more, uh, it uses common everyday items now. Right. Uh, for example, do you guys have old cell phones? phones or smartphones lying around at home? At least three. <laughs> Can I wow. have one? <laughs> no, because the, the, you know, they have updates and That's new right. items right. every, every yeah. now and then. Right. One or two, yes. The average person maybe buys another, a new a cell phone or a smartphone every two years, but um, and it just you don't know what to do with it, mm. really. Yeah. So there's actually ways you can recycle it. Hmm. By uh, actually, you can use your old cell phones to make it into a kind of surveillance camera mm -hmm. at oh, home. And show us how right. this works. So, you brought this and you yeah. wanted to hold, I'm supposed to hold on to it like yeah, this. Yeah, so hold on to that. And if you take a look at it, it turns into a little surveillance camera for your home. Mm -hmm. If you can get it to work. If I can get it to work, which it's not working right now. But you can use it as a black box for your, for your cars, or you can use it at home uh, as surveillance cameras. If you have pets, it might be a okay, good idea to so attach a couple of them. I get it, because most phones um, these days, they're equipped with Wi-Fi or some kind of uh, internet connection. Mm -hmm. You can use it as a, a mobile camera, basically. Exactly. So, you know, if you have pets at home, and if you want to know what they're doing while you're out of the house, you can attach it, uh -huh. and you can use these phones. Yeah. All right, that's a, that's, you have three cameras already, Minjo. So, yeah. 
yeah, that's right. <laughs> All you need is to room. go and get three pets. <laughs> <laughs> or, or have more babies. Yes. That's right. That's right. Uh, it's really um, not easy to uh, you know, keep yourself in that cycle. You mentioned the three commandments, reuse, uh, was it refuse, reduce, reduce, and, re reuse, and also recycle, right? Mm -hmm. So keep doing that. And also some of these electronic gadgets, you know, right. if it's just sitting around, I guess it'd be a That's perfect right. way and to use it. And think twice before throwing anything away. Exactly. 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 But we are, I think, doing a good job with the recycling. Karen, mm -hmm. natural diapers, please. Natural diapers, yes. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. All right. Thank you for this report. Thank you. And still to come on Korea Today, do you own a pet? If you're a pet owner, you might be interested in our Hot Items segment. Today, we're going to show you some smart and practical items that you'll need to make your pet's life and yours a lot happier. From an automatic feeder to a hair dryer just for your furry friend. Stay tuned for this story. The Directors Guild of America holds an annual DGA Student Film Awards for student filmmakers. It's regarded as high as the Academy Awards. Now, recently, the Korean director Lee Ju Hyun received the Best Asian American Student Filmmaker Award with her film Kang Nengi, or Sweet Corn, and she joins us in the studio this morning. Good morning, and congratulations on the award. Yeah, thank you. All right, the film uh, it touches up on many different subjects. I would say that uh, it's a simple story that revolves around a theme. Now, this theme includes dreams, desire, burden, love, as well as um, filial piety. Now, tell us a bit more about your film, Kang Nengi. Sweet Corn, Kang Nengi, is a um, film about Korean father and son who live in a small farm village called Angsong. Um, the father is a corn farmer who has been farming for his entire life, so he's a very stubborn guy. And the son um, doesn't want to follow his father's path, and he wants to go to the big city to make his own dream. So, of course, father doesn't uh, approve on his son's lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're not going to spoil that film mm -hmm. for anyone else who wants to watch it. Mm -hmm. um, it's about a 20-minute film, and yes. I did catch it. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems to have uh, a lot of surprises mm -hmm. at the end as well, and that miracle is a part of where the theme revolves around. Now, what's the message that you wanted to convey to the audience through your film? As a Korean filmmaker in the United States, I think it's interesting to see um, American family is very open to the family members. Like they say, I love you, I'm so proud of you to the family members. Mm -hmm. But in Korea, um, we are rather shy about showing our feelings to our family members. So I started writing about this uh, father and son who is not good at um, expressing their love to each other, um, but they deeply care about each other in their mind. Mm -hmm. So that's the uh, message I wanted to say. Even though we are uh, not good at showing our feelings to our closest family members, we have different ways of expressing our love and um, respect to each other. Uh, I understand that Kang Nengi hasn't uh, premiered here in Korea yet. Is there a plan for a release here? Yes, I showed uh, my film in Heartland Film Festival and DJ Award Night and also San Diego Asian Film Festival. But in 2014, I'm gonna uh, have a Korean premiere in Korea as well. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna submit uh, to the film festivals in Korea as well. Well, what kind of reviews are you getting? What kind of reactions are you getting from the audience members who've uh, viewed your film? I had really good uh, responses. Um, uh, after I show my film in film festivals and also DJ Award Night, uh, I was very surprised because a lot of people came up to me and said, um, the film really remind them of their own family, mm -hmm. not just Asian audiences, but American audiences told me it reminded them of their own American family. So I thought it's very um, interesting and realized uh, the power of the film as a, a cultural medium. Like no matter where we are from or who we are, um, the film can communicate between like audiences and directors. Well, the film, it, it does, you wrote the script for Kang Nengi. Um, is there, is, does it come from so, uh, personal experience, the whole screenplay and the thematics around the film? Yes, I believe every director has their own experience in their film, and um, same here. The son's character a little bit resembles as myself, and the father's character um, resembles to my mother and also my grand father, so that's uh, how I wrote the characters um, live in the film. So it does come from 
personal experience yes. up to a certain point. Who are some of your uh, role models? Who can you say, who can you name that really inspires you to go a certain direction? Who inspired you to become a filmmaker? I mean, who inspires you to keep coming up with original stories? Um, I must say, uh, Ang Lee is one of my role model. Um, he is from Taiwanese family, and he moved to United States to study film, as myself. And he came back to Taiwan to make um, Taiwanese film, and also he worked in a lot of Hollywood films, very successful films. And he made a uh, very American film and also very um, Asian films. He. Um, jump around, uh, and also he make really good films, so he is a good role model for me. Mm -hmm. So Ang Lee or your mother? Both. <laughs> My mom is always an uh, inspiration for me. Okay. All right, so um, last question that I have for you is where do you see yourself in the near future? Um, I am actually writing a feature script. It's about a bunch of Korean, uh, Korean people people's lives intertwined in, city, in the city of New York. It actually uh, has a character similar to the father in the film Sweet Corn. Um, and I am very excited to uh, write this story. And I am looking forward to make a feature film in, um, near, in soon. All right, Chian, thank you so much for joining us today, and we hope to hear a lot more from you and uh, your endeavors in the future. And also, I hope to be in one of your films in the future as well. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Coming up later on Korea Today, the weather is expected to get colder once again starting tonight. So where do you take your children and let them loose? We show you some indoor areas where your kids can have fun and learn with hands-on experiences. Peter Bint will take us there. And a good Wednesday morning to you all as we kick things off on the ice. Now with the Sochi Winter Games right around the corner, speed skater Lee Sang Hwa went into her final tune-up at the 44th KSU President's Cup National Speed Skating Competition on Monday. The Vancouver gold medalist at the 500-meter women's event finished first with a time of 38.11 seconds, putting her preparations for the Sochi Games on the right track. While the final time is well short of her world record time of 36.36 seconds, she seems to be in great form. Now the 25-year-old hopes to work on her conditioning and stay in shape for the next month. And staying on winter sports for the first time ever, a Korean has won gold medal in the skeleton event as Yoon Sung Bin finished first with a time of 1 minute 45.73 seconds at the sixth round of the Intercontinental Cup in Canada. Now the 20-year-old hopes to use this momentum over to the Sochi Winter Games as fans in Korea hope for another surprise win next month. And now with that said, moving on to some Tuesday night's KBL action, we take a look at the Ursan Mobis Phoebus take on Anyang KGC. And now going into the game here, first quarter of the game, Moon Taeyang leading the way for Mobis as he puts up 12 points in the quarter as Mobis takes a slim 22-21 lead before going into halftime with a 35-33 lead. Now the second half of the game, the game is as tight as ever, but thanks to Rod Benson's 11 points in the third, Mobis extends their lead to three points going into the fourth quarter. Now KGC just unable to catch up to Mobis in this game as Mobis hangs on to take this game 69-66. And now finishing things off with some Tuesday night's V-League action as Russian Cash Vespid hoped to pull off an upset win over the Korean Air Jumbos. And taking a look at the highlights from the game, despite 11 errors in the first set, Russian Cash's offense looking great from the start as they take the first set 25-23. But those errors look costly later in the game as Korean Air answers back with the next three sets, taking the second, third and the fourth set 25-21. 25-19 and 25-18, with Michael Sanchez putting up 34 points on the night. But the biggest difference in this game is Korean Air posting up 15 blocks on the night as they take this game three sets to one. And that's going to wrap it up for me. This has been SJ. Have a great rest of the day and see you guys again for your sports needs.
looking at the Seoul station in Yongsanggu, Seoul. That's where the on-site ticket sales for the Lunar New Year holiday travel is taking place as we speak. Mm. That's right. It began at 7 a.m. today and it will go on until, I believe, uh, 9 o'clock or so. Mm. And uh, this is the chance to reserve your tickets at the window there at Seoul station. Mm -hmm. For a closer look at yes, how right. things are looking over at the Seoul station, we'll go right back to our dummy. How long are the lines there, Dami? I'm back reporting live from Seoul Station. Now, um, it's already been a week since uh, the year 2014, which means that uh, the Lunar New Year's holiday is just a bit closer. To be exact, it is on the 31st, so that means the holidays will be starting on January 30th to February 2nd. Now, as you can see this morning, there are a lot of people. The lines are quite long right now. Um, they're all here because Today is the start of the ticket reservation for the Lunar New Year's holiday. Now yesterday ticket reservations have begun through the internet first and it will go on for four days until January 10th. There will be a total of 1,515 trains that will be running for this year's Lunar New Year's holiday, which is 13 more than last year. Now this year the time slot for ticket reservations both online and on site has extended from last year starting from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. So making reservations will be much easier. Now the on-site tickets have started today at 7 a.m. and according to statistics 70% are making reservations through the internet and 30% through the ticket office. Now today at 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. ticket reservations will be taking place starting here from Seoul Station and other stations as well. There are certain lines that you can make reservations on, which are the Kyunggu, Chungbuk, Kyungbuk, Daegu, Kyungjeon, and Donghae Nambu lines. Now, ticket reservations for this year's Lunar New Year's holiday is through the internet or at the counter. During the time of the reservations, the customer center through ARS, the CoRail Talk application, and automatic ticket machines will be closed off. Now, for those of you that weren't able to purchase a ticket during the ticket reservation time, there will be a ticket sale for any available seats that are left on January 14th. You can always find more information on their internet website. Uh, I hope that all of you um, make plans or they work out smoothly for this year's Lunar New Year's holiday. That's all I have for now. I'm Ida Mi, Korea Today. Statistics show that there are over 10 million people who own pets here in Korea. That's one out of every five, leading to a huge boom in pet-related businesses. And today we're going to talk about some unique pet products here in Korea. And joining us this morning are Angela Park and her <laughs> lovely little puppy. What's her name? What's his name? It's a he. His name is Joey. So Joey, Joey look nice at the camera to meet there. You. Shake hands. Can you do right. it? <laughs> Good enough. Good enough. So um, this, cute. So I guess I'm part of that statistic that you're talking about, That's Min right. Jung. Um, I myself, and so am I. you're a pet <laughs> owner as well. I do believe there's a few members on our team that own pets. So um, that much more so we're seeing uh, pet cafes, mm -hmm. uh, pet salons. We have even pet car where the owner can have a system where you can shop with your pet in department stores. That's right. Did you know they even have pet fitting rooms? Mm -hmm. yes. I, uh, yeah, it's quite amazing, it's right? Kind so of amazing. let's talk about these products yes. that we have here this morning. Now, right. what's this product? Let's start with this. Well, this one, it kind of looks like a pee pad. I'm sure many people mm -hmm. can tell here. Right, like a puppy's bathroom. Yeah, right. this is a puppy care by Azzy Story, and it's a very state of the art, uh, smart care type of. Okay. Uh, Pee pad, if you I've will. been trying to potty train my my puppy. Uh -huh. It hasn't worked. Maybe this will be my answer. I I really believe it can be because in housebreaking your pet, this is very effective because it gives treats as well. Not to mention, it makes it very easy for the owner to clean. So let okay. me stop talking. Let me show you All right. how this works. Is this is where, where Joey comes exactly. in and helps us with the procedure. Okay. He's a little bit nervous. He's camera shy. But the pet will be on it, mm -hmm. on the system, and it'll register its weight, right? Okay. And then it does its business. Let's pretend this is his business. It drops on, and then the pet leaves. I'll get in for a second. Thank you very much. It'll register up to 15 grams. It's very sensitive to 15 grams. So it'll mm -hmm. register that, wait a minute, the pet is gone. 
Oh, is that your voice? That's my voice. Oh, so it, the owner can record, uh, record as right. uh, the voice and praise, sing, right? right? Compliments. And as you can see, snacks came out, and this starts to tilt automatically, okay. so that the business, whether it's P or number two, <laughs> it rolls into here and it gets cleaned up. Okay. Now cleaning up for the owner is also very easy. You just take it out, right? And then we have a double layer system here. So as double layers, very easy to clean like this. And then you can put it back into the system. Not to mention there's a little bin on the side here, if I could find it right here. Mm. And then that's where all the business gets dumped into. Okay, so, so all you have to do to is clean. take that and dump it in the trash exactly. bin. Exactly. Okay. So I'm gonna leave it right here and close that. This would be a great way to reinforce potty training for exactly. the dogs. Exactly, even when you're not home. That's right, and you get the compliments and then you get the snacks as well. I'm gonna give Joey What's one, not just because like? he's been so good. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> All right, let's talk about this item okay. now. Well, Ad, before we get to that, let's actually pass over Joey to one okay. of our staff because we're gonna need him to be in the waiting room and I'm gonna show you exactly why that's the case. So if maybe somebody could take Joey for me. One of our producers can help take us Joey, with this. Please? Oh. There we go. Bye, Joy. We'll see you in a little bit. Thank you very much. So this product here, this is our second one. It's called the Pet Station, okay? Mm. So it looks like a feeder, right? You put the food into here, and then if you take a look, Minjung, it's blue, right? That means it's on, it's automatically on. And so you can pre-schedule the time to feed your pet, let's say 7 p.m., then it pre-schedules it. So even when you're not home, it'll feed your pet. But here's the catch with the Pet Station. If you notice, there's a little camera in front right there. Wow, and what, what does that, that do? You can call the pet station at home via your smartphone and Skype. Oh. So you can check up and see how your pet is doing at home. From outside. Exactly. Anywhere from around the world. Technically, yeah, right. I guess so, right? Okay. So I'm gonna actually show you how that works. As long as you have Skype, you can go to the pet station website, register. Um, of course, we have um, your Skype account and your wireless router. If you kind of uh, input all that information on the website, set it up, have two Skype accounts, one for yourself and one for the pet, then you're good to go and you can call your pet, right? Okay. So let Let's me show you how, this, works. how it works. Okay. So we have Skype here. I'm going to call it, mm -hmm. link it up to my account, right? And there he is. You see it's it? It's connected already. <laughs> oh my God. That's so cute. He's in the waiting room. That's right. <laughs> okay. That's Joey. <laughs> okay. So it's, technically, you would be able to feed your pet mm -hmm. from outside yep. by pushing some buttons. You can do it all through your phone or you can do it manually. Let me show you manually. If you just push the manual button for maybe a second or two. There you Outcomes go. How comes the food, right? Okay. What a convenient item. Yes. Wow. So this is great because I'm usually nervous too when I leave Joey at home for too long. Mm. So you can call it that way. Also, if your pet, let's say it's really nervous or something's wrong and it starts pacing in front of the camera or in front of the pet station several number of times, there's like a set time, mm -hmm. right? Then the pet station will pick up on wait a minute, the dog's not okay. The pet's, something's wrong. So it'll He's then hungry. call you. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. How neat is that? Exactly. Okay, so, so technically, the it'll be like getting a phone call from your pet. Literally, saying, that's me. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> All right, okay. So that's the pet station. Okay, and what's the, the final, final item? item? This is Etira, right? Etira in Korean. And it's basically an auto pet dryer. Mm. Um, a lot of people actually might have seen some of these devices before if I turn it on. Because pets just hate getting yeah. their, hair, their hair blow dried with a regular. Oh, this is pretty neat. <laughs> it's like a hair dryer only for your pet. And then there's a lifting up and down function so it can move. You can pause it at a certain angle if you like this angle. Mm. Minjang, if you notice, it kind of has like a wide rectangular mouth. Mm. And that is designed specifically so that they could have a wider airflow so you could dry your pet. Um, you know, a little bit more efficiently. Mm. I, and I, I can sense that the air is mm -hmm. not as strong as the conventional, I guess, and not as hot as the, our conventional air Exactly. Airport. You can dryer. adjust the gust power so mm -hmm. it's harder. It's actually four times stronger than most dryers, but you picked up on a very good point. The air is not extremely hot. Most conventional pet dryers tend to be about 80 to 100 degrees Celsius, um, not to mention it's like 75 to 85 decibels in terms of the volume. Wow, it's pretty loud. It is yes. loud, but this one, it's um, 
40 to 45 degrees Celsius, not to mention 70 uh, decibels. So it's okay. a little bit quieter. So it'll be a nice gentle breeze mm -hmm. for the pe puppy. That's right? right. All right. That was a look at different products, some of the latest products, pet products that are out in the market. Let's bring Joey back in and say <laughs> goodbye. How about that? Um, can we say goodbye with Joey? <laughs> He's really excited to be on camera. <laughs> so as we grab him here. All right, thank you for your cooperation, Joey. <laughs> so right, Joey, say you. goodbye. <laughs> thank you, Angela. Thank you. We're expecting lows to dip to minus 16 degrees in the coldest parts of Korea by Friday, which means that uh, these low temperatures are going to keep people indoors. But do you have to stay home? Well, Peter Bint has resolutions to that. Good morning, Peter. Yes, uh, thankfully you don't have to stay home uh -huh. with screaming <laughs> children. Yes. Uh, so last week all the schools in Korea started their winter vacation, but like you said, the cold temperatures coupled with the high levels of fine dust particles in the air means it's really hard for parents to take their kids out to play. So I'm going to show you some great indoor activity centers from mum and kids bakery classes to children's museums with a whole host of unique activities. Let's take a look at some of these indoor activities in Seoul. This is the Seoul Children's Museum located in Kwangjinggu. Since opening its doors last May, it has become a popular destination with already 350,000 visitors. Mm, yes, the museum is four stories high and has different themed areas on each floor. This zone is called Nature Play. For children who are less likely to come in contact with nature these days, there's a friendly exhibition to help them get one step closer. That looks like fun. It's all good fun. I wanted to do it all. <laughs> and right next to it is a theatre screen showing the faces of many different children. Here kids learn about aesthetics hey, while they look at hey. pictures they took themselves. <laughs> and using the strength of wind, children fly fabrics of five colours, which symbolises happiness, and it brings them another experience full of joy. Even adults will enjoy that. Yeah, yeah. They That's wouldn't let me do it though, the kids were first. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, not only that, on this small stage, children become models in a traditional folk costume fashion show. I was in search of an indoor place to bring my child in the winter. Instead of just running around, I like that there are various tools to naturally help with learning. But I'm most happy about the affordable price. At Beyond Sensory Play, children use their five senses to learn how to look at things from a different perspective. And through these experiences, children learn that having a disability is not to be seen as abnormal, but simply different. And the program teaches them to be more thoughtful and accepting of these differences. After my child experienced riding a wheelchair, she mentioned how hard it must be to ride the subway. Teaching her to think from another person's view was a great learning experience. The most popular science play zone is located on the third floor. The water table is full of marvelous devices that turn, shoot and pump, showing children the hidden scientific fundamentals of water. The science play zone helps children learn since it triggers their curiosity. And make a mess at the same time. <laughs> Not at home, yeah. <laughs> There's more to play with here than a playground. I think the science part was the most fun. Next, we go to a place where all five senses are stimulated by sweetness. This is Oli Bolan, a kid's baking cafe where children can get their hands dirty. Right now, these cute bakers are busy putting on their aprons. Aw, look at the little chefs. <laughs> <laughs> the main visitors, ranging from toddlers younger than 36 months old to children up to 7 months old, the recipes are customised to suit their level. Seven years old, I would presume. Yes, yes seven, seven years old. Seven months old will be. <laughs> <That's pretty young. laughs> Too young. That's when they eat the dough with the fats <laughs> uncooked. And while the children bake, parents can observe and relax in the waiting area. I really enjoyed the experience because I was able to drink tea and relax for a moment while the children had fun playing. 
Because children need to make the dough and mold it into various shapes, the baking process helps develop their thinking skills and it also improves their ability to observe objects. Oh, look at those hands. Oh. <laughs> You're not allowed to eat them. The hands, that is. <laughs> Touching and gripping various items with their hands helps form emotional stability and keen sensory development. And also, baking is an effective way for children to get rid of any anxiety. I had the most fun playing with the dough and making it into shapes. While the bread is baking, children can wait in the playroom so they don't become bored. They receive their handmade treats, and it's time for mothers to taste what their children have made. Can you pass, or do you have to try what you're I think you made? should, otherwise your kids are going to be upset, right? <laughs> <laughs> Don't hurt the kids' feelings. There's too much sugar in there, maybe. It's good for fine motor skill development, and since the children made the food themselves, now I think they understand the importance of food. Not only do children have a fun time playing at these indoor activity centres, they also get to experience and learn new things. And kiss. of course we end on that scene. <laughs> that <laughs> boy stealing a kiss from that girl. You always bring things to do for us this weekend. But uh, take us back to this Sang Sang Nara directly translated as, I guess, imagination country. Yeah, it's more like that than a children's museum, you know, it's all hands-on and things like that. And it's actually run by the Seoul Metropolitan Government, and they've done something really great, which is limit the admission to make it comfortable and also safe mm. for everyone to visit. So you can get tickets two different ways, either reserve online in advance or go uh, on a first-come, first-served basis on mm. the site. But that can be really busy on the weekend. So if you reserve online, they say do that about two weeks prior to your visit. And if your kids are under 36 months, they're freely admitted. And then other children, it's about $4 per person. But they have great programs every day. So check out their website for more details. It's soulchildrensmuseum.org. Mm -hmm. Just in case for people who've already been to those two places, uh -huh. do you have any other options maybe for people? Uh, Luckily. Young check them out. Yes, <laughs> all, all of them. Stay Although home. I don't have any kids, I did, yes. Luckily we do. Uh, for animal lovers, Min Jong, you were just with the puppy. And uh, they've got a great experience at the Soul children's grand park it's an animal education class indoors so children can have the opportunity to touch and examine cute and small animals it's up close tiger. and alive oh, uh, there's is that a, a real tiger it's, it is a real one and there's also foxes and lovebirds there and zookeepers teach them about these animals at that time it's about eight dollars a class and it's running through until the end of january except sundays and holidays it's oh, quite amazing. affordable too yeah, yeah affordable. not bad that tiger just amazes me. Wow, you get a chance yeah. to come face-to-face with a kids would get a kick tiger. out of that, Do you need right? to have kids to go there? <laughs> 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 Young to wants to go alone. The animal. You, you can borrow one <laughs> of ours. Yeah. <laughs> Take your pig. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you, Peter, for this Thanks story. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. All right, that's all we have prepared for you on this Wednesday morning. That's right. We'll be back here tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. We'll see you then.